Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing our Dustmorn White Limited Set Review. We're going to go over every single card and give it a rating between 1 and 10, every single white card, and give it the rating between 1 through 10 depending on how we think it will perform in the average white deck. We've got Yanks on the call again. How you doing, Yanks? I'm ready to get this uh, first color underway. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not excited about Dustmorn, so I'm hoping the cards will be exciting. I'm with you on that. If you guys missed our introduction to Dustmorn, make sure you guys check that one out first because it's going to go over all the old mechanics that are returning, all the new mechanics, and all the draftable archetypes that you need to know going into the set. All right. Acrobatic Cheerleader is our first card, a two mana 2-2 two -two with survival that says at the beginning of your second main phase, if this cheerleader is tapped, put a flying counter on it. This ability triggers only once. Hmm. That seems pretty so, good. Yeah, so it's just got to survive either an attack or you have to find a way to, to tap it, basically. Yeah, very aggressive. Probably very good for Boros. Boros has that, like, two power and under, and you want those aggressive creatures that are small. And I think this is pretty good, and I like it when the aggressive creatures, your aggressive two drops, get better. And I feel like becoming an evasive creature is getting better. So I think this is pretty solid. Yeah, I think the card's pretty good. I, I'm a little worried that the very first card we see already emphasizes how important it is to be on the play. Yeah, I agree with that statement, but I do think this is going to be very good, so I'm going to give it a six. Agreed. Six sounds right to me. All right, Cult Healer. Three mana for a 3-3 three, three with Eerie. Whenever an enchantment you control enters, and whenever you fully unlock a room, uh, Cult Healer gains lifelink until end of turn. That's like a small, not exciting thing. Like life, like a couple points of lifelink can be good when they're free. Um, and I don't think triggering Eerie will be too difficult, but realistically, it's still just a three mana, three, three. Yeah, it's just a very small bonus. Yeah, it not depends. I mean, that... if there's like some life support archetype sub theme stuff going on, then this will be very good for that deck. But uh, I'm okay with this. I think it's like a five. Yeah. It's like a, yeah, exactly. It's, you're probably not cutting this card very often because it's just fine, but you're not excited. Agreed. All right. Next up we have Dazzling Theater and Prop Room. This was what we did, looked at in the introduction. So creatures, spells you cast have Convoke or, and or, untap each creature you control during each other player's untap step. So it's really nice to help you with Convoke, um, allow you to attack and have blockers. So this is a rare, and I think it'll be solid. Um, I think this is good. It's hard to rate these this early, but I'm going to go on a limb and say this is like a seven. Interesting. I kind of think this card kind of stinks. Hmm. I think Convoke uh, can be really good, and I think the untap is also pretty relevant. I, I can see the untap being relevant. The Convoke, I mean, spending four mana and a card just to make it easier to cast your other cards, it seems like a lot. I think the idea is that you and get you both. And you have to have a bunch of creatures. I think the idea is that you get both, so it's not just the one. Like, some classes aren't good on, sure. you know, floor one or sagas or whatever. But uh, you have both, and you're getting multiple triggers of Eerie. You're getting uh, enchantments for Delirium. I think it's just, like, a piece of a puzzle. It's a piece yeah. of lots of puzzles. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an expensive piece, I think. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of this card. I think I... My instinct is to say this is like a four. Okay. Uh, we're a little bit different there. Um, so this will be like one of our first ones that we have uh, a pretty separated rating. So that's interesting. All right. Next up we have, oh boy, this is going to be hard to read throughout the whole set. Uh, Dollmaker's Shop and Porcelain Gallery. Whenever one or more non-toy creatures you control attack a player create a 1-1 white toy artifact creature token so it's gonna be very very good for boros um but you have to attack with non-toys which is not super boros and then creatures you control have base power and toughness each equal to the number of creatures you control hmm 
So that like kind of mitigates like the Boros signpost and stuff, but it is very Borosy. Like it still is doing what Boros wants to do, and it's like another a secondary payoff if you can't find the Boros like under two power situation. This just turns all of your stuff into four five fives or you know something like that. So this seems good. Yeah, I really like this card much more for the sort of doll make our shop portion. Not that Porson Gallery is not powerful, it is, but this is going to be a little bit hyperbolic, but the doll maker shop can turn into like a bitter blossom pretty easily. As long as you have a, a, a some other creature to attack with. Like a 2 2 with flying? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think this card is really good. I think this can win some games, certainly. I do think both sides are game winning. And I think Agreed. the. I, I like the Porcelain Gallery side a lot, um, especially that it is accompanied by something that already poops out little dudes. So I think that's a really nice finisher. It's also two mana. So like the Dollmaker Shop side. So you're going to get those creatures really quick, really early. Um, Boros being like two drop, three drop into two drop plus this is going to be just absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, it's a mythic, definitely. so you're not going to see it a lot, but this is game winning. So I'm going to give this a nine. Yeah, I've got it as a nine as well. I mean, enchantments are generally tougher to remove as well. Now, with it being a theme of the set, imagining we're going to see some enchantment removal pretty easily main deckable, but you never know. Certainly easier to remove than a creature, harder to remove than a creature. Yeah. Next up, we have Emerge from the Cocoon. Five mana, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, you gain three life. A little bit of a, like, life, like, more life gain here than we've seen in the last few sets outside of the bats. Right? Yeah, true. So, I'm interested to see if there's any good use to that. Um, this is fine. It's going to depend entirely upon the quality of the cards in your deck. If you've got two, three rares that are worth bringing back, probably fine. I will say that these are also getting better now that we have play boosters, just because there are so many high-quality rare creatures floating around now. That's true. I didn't, I didn't really think about that. And you've also got uh, Manifest Dread to help fill your graveyard. And there is, I think, a cycle of, I think they're commons that are uh, land cyclers that are decent sized creatures that can get in the graveyard pretty easily. Yeah, it used to be that like it was rare for like, I don't know, one out of four decks would have like an on color bomb creature. But now I feel like it's uncommon for a deck to not have at least one, maybe two. Certainly feels like it. Yeah. And then, like, three and four become the, like, more uncommon -y ones. Uh, all right. Yeah. What, were, what were we rating that card? I think I've got it at, like, a five. Yeah, I like it as a five as well. CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of MTG Nerd Girl. And we're excited to offer a free MTG Nerd Girl Eldrazi token and 5% off your entire order when you use the code MNG at checkout. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up sealed product or the latest in magic accessories? We've got you covered. Show your support and use the code MNG5 at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Next up, we have Enduring Innocence, three mana for a 2-1 with lifelink. Whenever one or more other creatures you control with power two or less enter, draw a card. The ability triggers only once each turn. This already seems amazing. Uh, and then when Enduring Innocence dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. As an enchantment, it is not a creature. Huh. Holy shit. Yeah, this is... Um... Pretty nuts, as long as you have any real amount of two X's or fewer in your deck. Yeah, this seems nuts. And we've already seen things that make 1-1, one, one, right? It doesn't say non-token or anything. Nope. So, like, we've seen stuff already that makes tokens. This seems busted. Uh, and even if they remove it, you're still getting stuff. So, unlike Welcoming Vampire or... Um, mentor of the meek like this has like a fail safe in addition to just having lifelink and there's like that slight glimmer sub theme it's also cute as hell okay i take it back i guess i like the white creatures and the googly-eyed yeah. spider there's a few cuties in here um and if you have eerie it triggers when there's a battlefield and then it triggers again when it dies because it comes back <laughs> yeah this card seems very very good it's an eight 
Yeah, I think that's an eight that is probably higher in Boros. Um, I was thinking Azorius because Azorius had the whole enchantmenty theme. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I'm just thinking for the power two or less creatures. That's true. Well, I think any deck will be good with these. Um, the the format seems fast enough to where, and all of the formats recently have been pretty fast. Uh -huh. Where I think this is just going to be incredibly strong. But yeah, you're right. Like yeah. Boros will have more ways to trigger this, and then I think Azorius will have more benefits for having enchantments and stuff come into play and sort of play well with it by itself. And, and I mean, just because there was enough room for one more line attack, it's lifelink too. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the third life gain thing, fourth life gain thing we've seen. So there better be something going on here. Next up, Ethereal Armor, one mana for an Enchant Aura. It gets plus one, plus one for each an enchantment you control and has first strike. Okay, uh, huh. That's a, that's a card. It's going to kill people. It's always tricky because you get two for one and you just get blown out and you lose. But also you just play these like curve out with stuff like this and you just landslide win games. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a reprint from, I think, most recently returned to Ravnica, but, um, well, I guess most recently it was in, like, a commander set, but originally returned to Ravnica and Time Spiral Remastered. Yeah, what are you thinking rating-wise? Because this is not the thing that's going to be good in every deck. It's going to be very Azorius-y, right? Yeah, I... I there might be a case in Boros if you have, if enough things are enchantment creatures, we'd have to see just that sort of boost in an aggressive deck can be what you need. But I think you're right. I think it's mostly Azorius. Based on what we saw from like the signposts um, and things, I think that that is where this will want to live. So it's probably a split rating. It's probably like a three and a six. I mean, what do you, if you just, what do you give a card that's just like one mana plus one plus one first strike? I mean, I feel like that's probably better than a three because it counts itself. Yeah, first strike is pretty good. I just, I don't like things that get, get two for one so easily unless there's I, like pretty massive payoffs. So my concern I, is like, I agree that's still fine, but I'm still not playing them most of the time. I'm still cutting that. Yeah, I think that card I would probably not be thrilled with, but the fact that, like, this has such a high upside, like, this can just put this on a fire and game ends right there. In one deck. But n you were saying it, mean, by, by it's itself it's a 1-1 one, one with first strike. The game doesn't no. necessarily end. No, no. Oh, I agree with that, but I think even in a not Azorius deck, it's not gonna... It doesn't look, from what I'm seeing, too hard for this to be plus three, plus three. Hmm. I'm I'm hesitant to give it to give it that much credit for any archetype this early, but I, I guess if it is very consistently in any deck plus three plus three, sure, then it would go up. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. Yeah. If there's that yeah. many enchantments in the format across all colors, sure. But yeah, I, th I think Orzov in white is probably the one place you you would probably not want this, but it feels like Boros just aggro likes this Azorius. Lesnia, this makes it a lot easier to get your things through and get them tapped. In which one? I, in Selesnia. For the survival stuff. Yeah, maybe. Someone in chat's know. asking, are auras ever really that good in limited? The question is, the, the answer is sometimes, right? Especially when they like ETB draw you a card or ETB destroy a card. Um, we've seen the cycle of those and they've been getting better each and every year. And I just don't think that this fits that requirement, but Yanks does. So we will, we will have to see. So my rating was three and a six, depending like right in the right yeah. archetype in the enchantment archetype, I give it that boost up to a six. Yanks, what are you thinking? I think I'm probably just having it as like a five and it gets, a, it'll be better in Azorius, but I, I think I, I don't necessarily have it as a split. Fair enough. Um, it's funny because we're usually on the exact opposite side of this argument on auras. <laughs> I think we mostly agree on auras. The The issue is that I like auras that require you to play creatures and you typically don't because you don't want to play creatures. Whereas my decks just always have 15 or more creatures. So yeah, I feel I like our is... argument is based on whether or not we're playing creatures, not whether or not the aura itself is any good. Yeah. 
All right, next up we have a two mana sorcery, exile target, artifact, enchantment, or creature with power four or greater. This seems like it's going to be nuts because of all the enchantments. Yeah. You're always going to have a target for this, and when you do hit a creature, it's going to feel amazing. For only two mana, sign me up. Yeah, this card's great. Premium removal. It's an eight. It's an eight. The only thing you could ask for, for it to, would it be for it to be an instant, but... I'll, That's I'll greedy. <laughs> Uh, next up, Fear of Abduction. Six mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer as an initial cost to cast. Uh, you can exile a creature you control. When it enters, target creature and opponent... When it when it enters, exile target creature and opponent controls. Jeez. Uh, and whenever it leaves the battlefield, put each card exiled back onto the battlefield. Okay, so you kill your smaller thing, or you exile your smaller thing, exile their biggest thing, and net a 5-5 five, five flyer. That seems pretty good. This will feel really, really bad when you have no other creatures, but <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a sick drop. <laughs> it's still like six mana kill their dragon or whatever. You know, it's kind of okay. Yeah, and it's nice that that card goes back to their hand at least. Yeah, like it's not like it's they can like kill it and you know disenchant it. Oops, surprise blocker, or <laughs> at least they have to recast it. Yep. Yeah, I think this card is good. It's a nice top end. It's good for like tempo situations. Uh, it's also an enchantment, which a lot of white decks really care about. Uh, it's creepy. So that's for sure. Probably it's a little pricey. I think this format's going to be kind of quick. So I'm going to give it a, a hmm. Ooh, the tempo is so good. I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah, I like it as a seven. I'm um, just, I'm. A question from Chad. I think they're correct, which is weird that they changed templating on these these type of cards. What 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 was the question? So so the old Banisher Priest, I think it was, and like Oblivion Ring, mm -hmm. templated that if you cast it, exiled it, something, and then with the trigger on the stack, bounce the Oblivion Ring, it would stay exiled forever. And they changed that with like banishing light to say like until this leaves the battlefield, so that you couldn't do that anymore. But I believe you could do that with this. When this leaves the battlefield, put each because it used to. Sorry, there are two separate triggers here. It used to the way they changed it was to make it all one ability. Okay. So I think. Yeah, it says enter is X, you put the exile trigger on the stack, you bounce this, the leave trigger, the second trigger is on the stack, there's nothing for it to return, and then the first one exiles it for good. Um, now you're also exiling your thing for good in that situation. Okay. If you sack it before the creature is exiled, yeah. they don't get it back. Okay, and we did see like a... Rakdos sacrifice situation. So there's a world where, yeah. I don't know, maybe you're Azorius or something and you have some sack outlets. Um, yeah. Hmm. Just yeah, interesting. That is interesting because a lot of times when someone targets your stuff with like an O-ring or something, you like kill it in response. And if you do that in the wrong situation, you don't get your stuff back. But yeah. I feel like we haven't had anything templated like that for a while. Yeah, and Chad is also pointing out that they are correct. I am wrong that you would get your thing back because your thing's a cast trigger. Ah. Or sorry, it's not a cast trigger. It's a cost, not a. ETB. And so yours is already gone. So it yeah. does get to come back. To your hand and theirs goes away. Hmm. Trixie, now, Trixie. Right, yours, yours stays exiled forever if the spell gets countered. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Jesus, criminy. There's a lot going on in this card. <laughs> That's a lot for an uncommon as far as like. <laughs> You know, and, and the funny thing is, is like 99% of Magic players and Magic games, that'll never come up. Oh, no. Um, that is just when you start getting <laughs> really, really into it. So that's that's pretty gross. Um, cool. I mean, I guess it's the same with like any removal spell, right? The like you should bone shards or whatever, you know, as an initial cost, sack your thing yeah. or discard to like some impulse draw. Um, if anytime that counters, that's going to happen. So agreed. You need to have some little little puny guys that you want to be sacking with this anyway. Um, rating wise, what are you thinking? I'm still thinking a seven. Seven, yeah, I agree. All right, fear of immobility. We have a five mana four four. When this enters, tap up to one target creature. 
If an opponent controls that creature, put a stun counter on it. Oh, that's cool. You don't put a stun counter on it because you have uh, whatever the new mechanic is that wants you to tap your stuff. So you can do this when your small creatures can't get in to get those valuable triggers. Huh. Yep. And you don't put the stun counter on it so you don't punish yourself. I like that. That yeah, seems it's a cool. nice way to um, turn kind of what's usually a pretty simple, you know, one directional effect into a little bit something a little bit more flexible thanks to the new mechanics. It's an enchantment creature, which is going to be pretty relevant. I like the tempo aspect for like a Boros top end. If like this is where your top end of Boros curves out, I feel like this can help you really lock in those early wins. Yeah. So this feels good to me. Um, it's a 4-4 four, four for five mana, which is not great typically, but I do like the tempo. So I'm going to say it's like a six. Yeah, I think I like it as a six. All right. Fear of Surveillance, two mana for a 2-2 two, two with Vigilance. When it attacks, you get to Surveil one. Hmm. Okay. Vigilance is cool for Convoke and situational stuff. It's an enchantment creature. It's kind of creepy. Uh, and I do like Surveil. Feels like your Delirium and your, um, you know, Graveyard Recursion stuff that we've been seeing. This is pretty good. For a bear, I think I'm fine with this. We're not cutting it, but it's not it's not super special. Yeah, it's good for the Orzov sort of reanimator sub theme. I was gonna say it's pretty terrible for uh Celesnia, but I guess it doesn't have Survivor on it anyway, so who cares that it doesn't tap? Well Celesnia probably has the convoke creatures, and it's an enchantment for Azorius. So it kind of fits in just yeah. about anything going on for white. Um so I'm going to say it's like a five in the average deck because every deck has a reason to want this. Yeah, I like it as a five. It's just filler, but it's yep. synergistic filler, which seems to be more <laughs> and more important every set. Uh, Friendly Ghost, four mana for a two, four flyer. When it enters, target creature and opponent, uh, or target, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> when it enters, target creature gets plus two, plus four until end of turn. It's just like an okay mana flyer to boot eh, it's like tempo-y i like that this triggers all the boro stuff oh yeah true that was two four was kind of a weird i was trying to have two four was a pretty weird power toughness but yeah that makes sense so it's kind of kind of nice for that and it's doing doing stuff i'm guessing spirits will be kind of cool spirits will get some new stuff um in this set i'm sure eh, rating wise it's not again nothing special um it's not an enchantment or anything so I would say this is probably just filler. It's yeah, like a five. They, they couldn't get the license to call this Casper or whatever. Probably. That's true. Yeah. Friendly ghost. It's like I in think... life. His name, is, his name is Marcus. I mean, <laughs> Marcus, the friendly ghost does not have the same ring to it. It does not. Uh, rating wise. What are you thinking? I think a five. Yeah. I like it as a five as well. All right, next up, Ghostly Dancers, five mana for another spirit. It's a two five flyer. When it enters, return an enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand or unlock a locked room, door of a room you control. And it has eerie whenever an enchantment you control enters. Uh, and whenever you fully unlock a room, you create a three one white spirit creature with flying. This is busted. Like you, it comes into play and gives you your value that you really need. Returning an enchantment from your graveyard to your hand is really, really good already. And if you can make one flyer out of this, it's it's amazing. This is going to win so many games. I think this is a nine. Yeah, I mean, all you have to do is have a room in play with a door unlocked to immediately get a three one. Yeah, if you're if you're using its ability to unlock a second room, yeah, yeah you're just you get a three one. Okay, so they can't even stop it. God, this is this is a nine. This seems so good. Yeah, this card's fantastic. I mean, you can very easily for five mana get five six worth of flying over two bodies plus whatever benefit from that second room. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Glimmer Seeker, three mana for a three three with survival at the beginning of your second main phase. If it's tapped, draw a card. If you control a Glimmer creature, if you don't control a Glimmer creature, you get to make a one one white glimmer enchantment creature token so if you tap it once you get the glimmer if you tap it again you get to draw cards which seems really really good and this is your, a better three three for three than we saw earlier definitely and all your glimmer and your glimmer that enters the battlefield triggers your eerie 
Yes. But it only does that once, so you're only going to yeah. get, you know, well, get that. Unless the Glimmer dies. Yeah, unless you can kill it off, sure. Um, but either way, I'm happy with the card draw. And the enchantments seem like they're going to come pretty easy, so yeah. Yeah. Tapping this won't be too difficult. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3 on curves, so you're getting some good value. You yeah, saw cards that tap it, so I like this. Yeah, this is enough of a payoff that I'm like actively looking for things to tap my stuff if I have this. To just keep drawing cards. I'm going to say 6.5. I almost just finished with, when you said 6, finished with 0.5. <laughs> exactly 6.5 we are in agreement yep all right moving on we have the next room card we have the grand entryway and the elegant uh rotundra uh whenever you unlock this door create a 1-1 one, one white glimmer enchantment creature token Ooh, so you get two enchantment ETBs when this happens. And also whenever you unlock this door, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. That's a small little bonus. Um, and it's interesting that we talked about it, but there was the card that made you want to sacrifice enchantments. This is a premium candidate, right? Because you've done the thing. And then there's cards that can return those enchantments back to your hand. So this is going to be pretty cool. It's a really good enabler for enchantments. It's a really good enabler for go-wides and sacrificing our uh, enchantments. So I like this card. Yeah, it fits nicely into a few different themes. Um, it's good gets you some cheap or some low-power creatures for Boros as well. Yep. It definitely is doing a lot of the things that White wants to do. It's pretty low impact on every street, but it is multiple things that make me pretty happy. I'm going to say this is like a six. Yeah, it's a six. It's Everything's cheap enough that it's... The fact that it's low impact is fine. All right. Next up, we have Harden Escort. We have a three mana, two, four. When it attacks, another target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero oh, and gains indestructible till end of turn. It's a pretty nice little bonus um it's a two four tax well makes smaller creatures indestructible um and you can tr you can stack these triggers in such a way to where it won't like punish your boros stuff right yeah depending on what those triggers are you yeah. should be able to like the the sign card yeah yeah so that's nice um just seems like filler to me though it's like a it's a, a, a not exciting filler, but it is only three mana, so I'm going to say it's a five. Yeah, I have it's five as well. It's very playable for three mana. Agreed. Jump scare. God, that's ugly. Uh, we have a one mana instant. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus two, plus two, gains flying, and becomes a horror enchantment creature in addition to its other types. I like the one mana combat tricks, especially after seeing like the Boros signpost where you really want to be getting into combat. You really want to be tapping your cards for um, whatever that mechanic is. Survivor. Yeah, Survivor. That seems really relevant. So having these combat tricks sort of enables you to do that. Um, yeah, seems fine. This is a, a, a good combat trick. Yeah, I remember when you had to pay two mana for plus two, plus two and flying in Mighty Leap. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't even turn into a relevant creature type for you. <laughs> um, yeah. The uh, jump scare having boo as the flavor text is really funny. It's pretty great. Good good call, Scatter. Um, Rating-wise, I think this is good. I'm going to be playing these in my creature decks, certainly. Um, I think it's like a six. Yeah, this is what, you're, what you want out of a combat trick. Cheap and dangerous and doesn't have to just you know he doesn't have to create a situation where you're getting somebody you're getting a blocker you'll just use this to kill something someone by just jumping a big creature yeah i'm i'm certainly not cutting the first ones of these so a yeah. uh, ley line of hope to um sorry two white white for a ley line that can come into uh, the battlefield before turn one if it's in your opener and when you would gain life you gain that much plus one okay as long as you have at least seven life more than your starting life total, creatures get plus two, plus two. So now we're seeing a good reason to have a lot of those, um, like, kind of sporadic life gain triggers we've seen just stapled onto other instants and sorceries, as well as multiple lifelink creatures. Yeah, we've had, certainly had more 
life gain than we've seen recently. I'm still not sure it's enough to justify playing this as a, you know, spending a full card on this, but it is a huge impact. Yeah, I agree. I need something else. I need a couple other, like a signpost uncommon or something that makes me interested in gaining life. Um, cards with multiple gain life triggers. And then I'd be interested in running this. I think it's a cool thing for limited. I think it's not going to be supported enough, but I'm hoping it will be. So it's a split rating, of course. It's like a one and I don't know, like a, a seven, like, if that deck exists. It's, it's the best card in your deck, if that's the way your deck works. If the, it, if exactly. Your deck it. But I don't think that's going to happen. But if you're behind and you draw it, then it's really bad. Like, I'm going to say 1-7. Sure. All right, Lionheart Glimmer, 4 mana for a 2, 5 with Ward 2. Whenever you attack, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 till end of turn. That seems very good. Yeah, another uh, relatively expensive creature with 2 power. It's just to suit that Boros uh, archetype. It's an enchantment. It's a glimmer. Two things that are relevant. Um, it's a 2 power for Boros. Um, and it says creatures you control so it attacks as a three six which is pretty massive i'm gonna say this is like a seven it's a great snowball yeah. for an aggressive deck well, a little lower on i still think it's good not much like 6.5 because there are going to be decks where this is just kind of a whatever you know big body blocker agreed uh, all right, Living Phone, a 2-1 for 3. When it dies, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card with power two or less from among them and put that into your hand. Put the rest onto the bottom uh, in a random order. It's an artifact. It's a toy. Two things that really matter for Boros. It's two power, which matters for Boros, and it replaces itself. It's aggressive. It's a little expensive for what you're getting on its face, but I think the value is there over the long haul. I'm going to say it's a... A five. It's really only a Boros card, but it's a five still in Boros. Yeah, I, I don't know how many cards you'd need to have in your deck that hit this for before you're reasonably likely to, but it's it's probably honestly a split rating. It's probably like a three and not Boros, and then maybe even lower. And then I still think yeah. it's only fine in Boros yeah. at a five, so Yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably right. It's probably like a two slash five. Yeah. Optimistic Scavenger. One mana for a one one with Eerie. Whenever an enchantment you control enters uh, or you fully unlock a room, put a counter on this creature. I like that. It's a, an early drop that kind of snowballs out of control. And I think, I think enchantments will be very, very common. A lot of creatures, a lot of rooms, a lot of returning enchantments from your graveyard to your hand. So I think this is going to be playable in... It'll be very good in, in one or two decks, but I think it will be moderately playable in a good number of decks. So I'm going to say it's like a five. Yeah, I think it's a five. It suffers the usual issue that one drops have and that it's pretty terrible in the late game, but that's what you're used to with the one drop. So Yeah, but I feel like it gets bet more like it averages out well with the fact that this becomes incredibly good in the early game compared to the average one drop. So sure. um, it's closer to a split rating, but I'm just going to average it to a five. Orphans yeah. of the Wheat, two mana for a two, one human. Uh, when it attacks, tap any number of untapped creatures you control, uh, and it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature tapped this way. So it's really good to activate all of your survival stuff. It's really good to... Um, Use your summoning sickness creatures for, like, being aggressive, so Boros-type stuff, and it's a good, like, curve and stuff for Boros. This seems good. Yeah, it's a pretty cute uh, Children of the Corn reference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's another sort of cheap white creature that fits into a couple different decks. Yeah. Um, again, nothing super exciting. It feels... Very built for Boros, it'll play up there, but in general, I think it's like I'm trying to wonder like how how many creatures is the average deck gonna be running? Because I want to say it's a five, but it might be 
Yeah, I'm just going to say it's a five. Yeah, I think it probably averages out. Like, it's probably a little better than that in Boros. It's probably pretty good in Selesnia. Um, But it's probably pretty bad in the other blue white decks, so. Agreed. Ooh, a mythic enchant creature. We have seven mana for a 6-6 six, six with impending four uh, for four mana. And whenever uh, Overlord of the Mist Moors enters or attacks, create a 2-1 white insect creature with flying. Huh. Hey, it's grave type. That's creepy and very good. Uh, it's when it enters, you get a, a 2-1 flyer, which seems pretty good. You can cast it for four, and it comes out on turn eight, which is probably better than when you're going to hit seven lands. So I think you're getting a steal. Uh, although you did nothing on turn four for a few turns, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, it's... Uh, oh, it, two 1-1 one, one flyers. Two. two yeah, it's, whole. It, it, it's Grave Titan. <laughs> it is two 2-1 two flyers. I didn't read that correctly, uh, and it didn't even occur to me because it still seemed real good. Um, yeah. But now it's real, real good. Uh, okay. Is this... I, I, I want to give this a 10. Is this our first 10? I mean, you're right. You say you do nothing on turn 4. You're, you're, you're getting 2-2-1 two, two, flyers on turn 4. That's a reasonable 4 mana spell. Oh, you get the flyers right away? Yep. I thought you had to wait until after the impending. Ooh. No, no, no. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my god, I'm going to die to this so much. And it's an enchantment creature. You get the two ones when you cast it for impending? Yep, because it enters. It's just not a creature. Holy shiitake mushrooms. Shut up. Okay, it's a 10. It's our first 10. <laughs> oh, I'm not excited to die to that. Oh, this is creepy. Patched plaything. <laughs> Why? I want to go back to Bloomborough. <laughs> Oh, three mana for a four, three with double strike. And it enters with two minus one, minus one counters on it if you cast it from your hand. So you get a lot of bonuses from recurring it from the graveyard. It's an artifact. It's a toy. Three mana for a two, one double striker toy. That seems pretty good. And we did see what the Selesnia signpost puts plus one, plus one counters on stuff. So you can sort of mitigate that potentially in that deck. Yeah, and it's just a better 2-1 for Double Striker in Boros seems very good for 3 mana anyway. Yeah, and Orzov wants to reanimate it, so you don't you just get a 4-3 Double Striker then. Cool. So this is just a 6? Yeah, I think so. It's just doing what all of the archetypes want to do? Yeah, Azorius will ignore this card, but the other 3 will be pretty happy with it. Um, Possessed Goat, a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. You can pay 3, discard a card, put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Possessed Goat. And it becomes a black demon in addition to its other colors and types. Activate only once. <laughs> That's a cute card, right? You always, there's always like all horror tropes of like sacrificing a goat to something. Well, the goat came back. <laughs> yeah, and you sac the sa the goat sacrificed something of yours. Yeah. Huh. I don't like it. I don't mind discarding a land late or whatever, but I don't, it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't do enough for me to care. So it's a good discard outlet if you really want to be doing stuff like that, but I don't think I'm as interested. Certainly yeah, not think, in the average deck. I think this is meant like an Orzhov plant, right? It's there for you to discard a big creature to reanimate later. Yeah, but I don't care. So I'm going to say <laughs> that this is a two. Yeah, in the I, average I deck. I think it's... I guess you can do it at instant speed. So it's something. But yeah, I think it's still a two. And nobody else is going to want this card. So if you're Diorza player, you'll get... You're still it, like, spending four feet, mana yeah. and two cards for a four-four. Like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not... That's not anything exciting. Agreed. Yeah. It's a two. Go away. Do you agree? I agree. All right, next up is the Reluctant Role Model. This is the card that Veggie cosplayed and cut his hair as. So you, if you see Veggie, uh, you get to see him look like this. Uh, two mana, two, two with survival at the beginning of your second main phase. Uh, if this is tapped, put a flying lifelink or plus one, plus one counter on it. Excellent. Whenever Role Model or another creature you control dies, if it had counters on it, put those counters onto one target creature. Huh. 
So yeah, all your counters live forever. On yeah. Something. You have to kill this guy first and you get the counters. He's got to survive once, but he's a 2-2 two, two for two. So like if you're on the play, you're going to get a good swing in here and you have good cheap combat tricks. I think this is good. Um, probably not cutting this. I'm going to say it's an eight. It can win the game if left to do its thing. Yeah, it's it's certainly pretty threatening for a two drop. Yeah. And yeah, you just there's another one kind of we saw another survival card earlier, right? If you can just find get these cards, you're just looking for any sort of ways to cheat the tapping ability. Agreed. Uh you agree with an eight? I agree. All right. Savior of the small, four mana for a three four core savior. Uh, at the beginning of your second main phase, if this is tapped, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Yes, please. It's a seven. <laughs> yeah. This is the magic I like to play. Those incremental value of, of returning things. It's a three, four. It attacks pretty well. Gosh, so much value. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I think this card's pretty good. I, I like it as a seven. Seas from Slumber. Uh, five mana. Destroy target creature at instant speed and costs three less to cast if the creature is tapped. This is White's premium removal. Just going to give this an eight. Yeah, I'm actually just, I'm actually kind of surprised this is an exile target creature for some reason. I don't know why. I just assumed that's what it would be when five it's mana. It's too cheap. Would... Normally we see that at like sorcery speed. Without, yeah, the without the discard, discount, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. It's it, it's probably right for it to be destroyed. I just, I don't know why. That just kind of surprised me. We usually, I mean, white typically gets the exile. It's just, this also is getting the upgrade in speed and the upgrade in the discount. So it makes sense that it would get a, disc, a downgrade in the removal yeah. effect. So No, that makes sense. All right, uh, Shard Mage's Rescue. One mana for a flash enchant creature you control. Um, as long as this entered this turn, enchant creature has hexproof and it gets plus one, plus one. I like this. I like using instant speed combat tricks that stick around as well as like anti-removal. So overall, I'm I'm running this card. I mean, it's that, uh, why can't I think of the name? It's that stupid green combat Stone trick. Stone Coil Serpent. Blue. Uh, no. Similar. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's don't. It's serpent. Serpent something. The card that messes you up every time you say I win unless they have this card, and then they always exactly. freaking have they that card. Always have it. It's um. Hang on. Why did I think it was Stone Coil Serpent? Snakeskin, snakeskin veil. That's why. <laughs> 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 it's basically the same two words. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing, right? It's. Hexproof for a turn, plus one, plus one permanently, but it's just the flavor of, A, the flavor of being white, but also the flavor of enchantments where you get eerie and enchantments and stuff. Yeah, you can trigger eerie, oh god, at instant speed? That's amazing. Oh, this card is fantastic, I love it. And, like, return and auras out of your graveyard, enchantments, oh, eerie, oh, so good, so good, so good. I'm, I'm hyped on this. Uh, I'm too hyped on this. I'm just gonna give it a... 6.5. Yeah, that's where I am on it, too. I've been blown out too many times by Snakeskin Veil. Come Snakeskin on. Veil. It's insane. I'm, I've am i lost so many games to that card. Uh, sheltered by Ghosts. Two mana for an enchant creature you control. When it enters, exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Sheltered by Ghosts leaves. Uh, and then enchanted creature gets plus one plus zero and has lifelink and ward. Hmm. It's interesting because you put this onto your creature, so you O-ring their stuff, but it's attached to your creature, so all they have to do is have creature removal. Yeah, but but you get ward too, which helps. No. Yeah, and your creature has lifelink. So like you're getting a nice little bonus, your creatures get bigger. So it's it's boosting it's a weaker removal spell than like an O-ring, but it's also boosting your creature in really cool ways. Um it's an aura. Huh. Yeah, it's 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 like overall a worse removal spell, but it's better in like your aggressive or tempo decks because you're it's help it's not just spending your turn removing their creature. 
Yes. And also getting a benefit. It is interesting, though, because it could put you in a situation in a slower, grindier game where you remove their creature and now your creature is no longer good in combat because you cannot risk getting double blocked or something. Mm -hmm. So then you end up like almost furthering the board stall in a weird way. So I still think it's good, but I do think it is strange. The tempo on it is probably it's probably going to play very high, but I'm hesitant to give it like a stellar rating just because it is so weak in a lot of areas. So I don't know. I'm going to say it's a six. Yeah, I think I'm a little higher. Like it's not premium removal, I think, but it's still pretty good. Like I think I just got it as like a seven. Yeah, I could I could see it being good, especially if you have like flyers, if you have if you're like Boros, where the tempo part of it, where you're like, you're casting this on two and three, well, maybe three and four to get rid of those blockers and, and keep getting in damage. It's just so weird to me. I, it's not a card we typically see, so I'm a little unsure. Yeah, the only kind of thing we've seen like this, and it's not even that much like this, is like stuff like Chain to the Rocks, where it goes on a land. Yeah, and that's a lot harder to remove. Absolutely. Uh, Shepherding Spirits... Six mana for a four or five flyer with plane cycling. These are always good. Plane cycle, like anytime you have cycling on it, it's a big creature on its own. This is just going to be a six. Yeah, and the, the cyclers, at least the the white and black ones, will fit nicely in the reanimator. Something. Yeah, too. absolutely. Oh, and and uh, and, and your delirium and stuff. Yeah. Um, split up three mana for a sorcery. Choose one. Destroy all tapped creatures or destroy all untapped creatures. Don't be a wimp. We'll cover more ground this way. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, this seems like a good card. I feel like you can play around this very well. It is a situational board clear, so sometimes it just isn't going to do what you want it to. But also, it's a lot more likely to be a one-sided board clear and, and leave you uh, with more cards and board presence. So these are always like an eight. Yeah, especially for three mana. Like, you just... You just get to. I think you're happ You're happier with a card like this, even if it only gets you like a two for one or three for one. You don't have to hold out for a massive blowout because you're only spending three mana on it. Yep. So even just a two for one or something is is pretty pretty good. So. Uh, all right. Next we have the split skin doll. Oh, I miss the bunnies. Two mana for a two one artifact toy when it enters draw a card then discard a card unless you control another creature with power two or less again very borosy um, but triggerable in any archetype and the draw and discard is good even if you don't have a ton of power two or less creatures so this card feels very playable to me um it's an artifact for um not delve why do i keep saying weird words delirium delirium thank you so even if you're like not in Boros, you're more like Azorius, or I'm sorry, Orzhov. Um, this has a, a fair number of uses. What do you think, Yanks? Yeah, I like this a little bit better than the uh, the three mana one we saw earlier, the Living Phone. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot better. Is, you know, you're you're never whiffing. Like, sure, sometimes you're only looting, but it's also just fine. one less mana. Three mana for, for that creature is a little little steep. So, um, rating wise, what do you think? I still think it's probably just like a five. Um, Boros will definitely be happier with it, but yeah. otherwise, that's probably all. But it's playable in any. I think it's probably a five on the average, but I think it will play up to a six in Boros. Sure. Surgical Suite and Hospital Room. Whenever you unlock this door, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And whenever you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature. I like both of these rooms. Uh, they both feel like the first one is really good value, really cheap. And the f second one feels like it can incrementally win games. Like that kind of mechanic we've seen before... Usually, like, in green, where it's, like, each turn you get a counter when you attack. Um, yeah, it was one of the, like, ranger class, was that it? Yeah, ranger that? class. But there was also, like, one that did that and then turned into, like, a 3-6. But 
I remember even it when it didn't transform, it still put in big work. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with these effects as a whole. I play a lot of creatures though. So I know Yanks, you probably care less. <laughs> um, a lot of cheap yeah. flying creatures here in white. Um, a lot of creatures that want to be turned sideways. So this will help you get into combat easier. So I, I like this card. I'm going to say it's like a seven. I like both sides. Yeah, a little lower, but not much. I mean, like 6.5. All right. Toy Beastie Befriender. Aww. It's kind of cute. Three mana for a 1-1. One, one. Legendary creature, human wizard. When Toy Beastie enters, create a 4-4 four, four white beast creature token with this creature can't attack or block alone. As long as you control four or more creature tokens, uh, create or creature tokens you control have flying. Oh. So you can just play this and kill someone? Yeah. As long as you got enough tokens. Also, it's a three mana five five. Like like three mana five five worth yeah, of power yeah. and toughness across two bodies. This seems fantastic. Yeah. No, this card's great. You have to have other so, creature tokens, but even if you don't, it's still good. Exactly. You're still getting sort of efficient bodies. Um, and it's it's not like the, you know, it feels like it can't attack or block along because it has to do it with Toby, but that's not true. It just has to have another creature. Yeah, just something else that can, uh, you know, a 2-2 a two -two flyer or whatever. Um, yeah. hmm. There is a deck where this is just like a 10. <laughs> um, maybe like a 9.5, because I guess if they just shock this, like in response and you have a four four but that's still pretty good for three mana um and then in the average deck i don't think you're going to have enough tokens to trigger this reliably in the average deck of course um you will in 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 some number of decks so i'm going to say yeah. those two things probably average out to an eight yeah i think i've got like a i was gonna say seven maybe seven point five I, I don't think that the tokens thing is going to come up very frequently at all. But I don't either, but I think playing a 4-4 four, four and a 1-1 one, one on turn 3 is just going to be good enough. Like, for yep. those snowball-y strong wins. Yep. So, I'm going to average yeah, them to, to an 8. Yeah, I'm not far behind you. Tapped in, Trapped in the screen, 3 mana for an enchantment with Ward 2. When it enters, exile target... Artifact, creature, or enchantment in opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. Okay, so this is an O-ring that has some built-in protection and can target artifacts and enchantments. That seems pretty good. White's premium removal. We're going to give it an 8, I think. Yeah, I was about to say, I was going to say it's just like a strictly better banishing light, but it's not because it can't hit. Well, Planeswalkers, I guess, is the only thing it can't really hit or, but that is something. <laughs> yeah. Uh... You like it at an 8? I like it as an 8. All right. Unidentified hover ship. Three mana for a 2-2 two, two vehicle. So that's really going to be very, very good for all your survivor stuff. It's a 2-2 two, two with flying. Uh, when it enters, exile up to one target creature with toughness 5 or less. And when it leaves, you can the exiled creature owner manifests dread. Interesting. So this is sort of like an apparition. What is that card called? Faithful apparition or something? Same mana Skyclave. cost, too. Skyclave Apparition. Yeah, that. <laughs> it's like playing, um, not charades, but like, you know, guess guess the card with Nerd Girl. <laughs> we just turned that into a, a game. Um, yeah, I like this. It's, it's good for one of the new mechanics in the set. Um, removal is always great. And it's a little flyer, good for Boros. It's an artifact, which is good to play for uh, Delirium. I'm, I'm very happy with this card. Yeah, I think this card's great. Eight. Eight works for me. Premium removal plus. So it's like an eight plus. Yeah. Unsettling twins. God, that's creepy. Two mana for a human. Two, two. That says when it enters, you manifest dread. So it's four mana for a two, two plus a manifest dread, which is good for like delirium and recursion for Orzhov. Um Yeah, this is fine. It's doing everything that you want to do in those colors so it's all um this is definitely not the twins from the shining not at all 
No, not at all. Uh, 5.5? I was going to say, the art's pretty great with the shadow of the two twins being like some giant insect monster. Yeah, like a, like they actually are fused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think, rating-wise? Uh, I think I've got it as a six. Just, I, I think, maybe I'm overcorrecting, but I think recent formats, you've just seen a lot of getting two bodies for one card is really good. And I think I've underrated that recently, so. Yeah. It just, like, the Manifest Red was, the, the archetype was Selesny, or not, um, it was Simic. So it's like, it feels a little out of place. And the Manifest Red's not a token, right? So that's not helping no. there. It's a 2-2 two -two for Boros. It's two 2-2s two for Boros. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's what I want for four four mana in Boros either, though. No. But maybe. Graveyard, I still think it's playable. It just it feels out of place where all of the other cards have been like, oh, it does yeah. this for this color, this for this color, this for this color. And it just feels slightly off. Yeah. We're still close. Like a five and a six. Unwanted uh, remake one mana for an instant destroy target creature. It's controller manifests dread. Okay, so it's like a swords, but they get to manifest dread instead of find a land or whatever. Yeah, it's like a bad polymorph or whatever, but because they get a 2 2 and it could be something good, but it's also cheap and instant speed. Yeah. yeah. What do you think rating wise? This one's a little tougher. It feels like pretty close to premium, but the manifest dread is, is very good still. Yeah, I want to put it in like a 7 or 7.5 because it's just so cheap. I'm on board for a 7. Veteran Survivor, 1 mana for a 2-1. At the beginning of your second main phase, if it's tapped exile up to 1 target creature from your graveyard. From a graveyard, sorry, I was like, where's the upside here? Uh, as long as there are 3 or more cards exiled with this, it gets plus 3, plus 3, and has hex proof. Huh. Okay. That's pretty good. You got to attack a lot. So you need combat tricks. You need ways to, to do stuff or you need like the vehicle to just tap it. Right. Or, um, yeah, you need, convoke. You, you need, you need cheating ways to, to tap this thing. Like convoke is nice, but I think it's only on like one rare and one mythic in the set. Vehicles are a good way. There's some equipment and some, what do we see? The one that's like gives a stun counter to their guy or not yep, one the, for you, the creature. So. Like, that can help. You, you definitely need a decent number of those to make this good. But if you have them, it's scary. I also think there's just going to be a fair number of, like, Boros decks that are happy to have a 2-1 that gets better with some combat tricks and stuff. Um, you'll, you'll still need a couple of ways to help, but this is a very aggressive card that gets better as you continue to put your foot on the gas. Like, on the play in Boros, this is going to be pretty nice. You need definitely. to have some stuff to exile, of course, but... It's interesting. Yeah, that's true. Like the fact you play this on one and attack, that might not even really count because you might not yeah. have anything in exile. <laughs> no, but the I, I think the idea is that you attack on you know two or three, they block you, you blow them out with a combat trick, and then post main you exile your combat trick or their creature, um, yep. and then it just kind of you know snowballs from there. Maybe there's like some leap effects. Um, rating wise, I think it's okay. Uh, it's not going to be good in the average deck, but it'll play up in, in like I said, an aggressive Eboros or anything that has, like, the survival cheats. Yeah, so I'm just going to say it's a four yeah. for now, but there's definitely going to be decks that want this card. Yeah, I think you're... Yeah, on average, you're probably right. It's probably around a four. All right, the Wandering uh, Rescuer. We did this one earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, five mana for a three four with flash and convoke it has double strike and other tapped creatures you control have hex proof so you can flash this in when they're targeting your tapped creatures which is really cool and uh yeah this is great i think this is a 10 or a nine a nine yeah i mean it's nine just even yeah block or blow out their removal flash eat something as a blocker yeah, flash, then, have six damage they don't expect. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, eat, eat their eat their attacker and then hit them back for six. Like it's very flexible, and you 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 brick their removal. Like there's nothing not to like here. Um, so I think it's a nine. Yep, I like it as a nine. All right, that is the end of white. What do you think, Yanks? White seems pretty good. Um, not sure yet which archetype. 
I like that. I mean, that this seems support most. I guess Boros has had the most support, really, it feels like. But that's because any two-power creature feels like support. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Any two-power. The thing is, though, that I think, like, the, the support is more, like, vague. Because you're right, it is just any yeah. two-power creature. Whereas, like, you know, the other stuff is a little bit more specific. So we'll, we'll have to see. I think... I think we saw some really good stuff for enchantments. So like the Azorius and the Demir care a lot about those things. So I think we saw a lot there. Um, yeah, if, for those of you guys who are watching uh, on YouTube, please leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think of white for the new Dustmorn set. And don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel because it really helps. Uh, and I always really do appreciate it. Thanks for joining us, Yanks. Anytime. We'll see you next time, guys. Don't forget to check out the um, introduction to Duskmorn and our blue set because that will be coming out here shortly. Thanks again, guys. Bye.